Greetings and happy Father's Day. We're glad that you are here with us today as we gather together on the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The presider for today's liturgy is Father John, and in today's liturgy we are remembering John Gamp. So that we might pray and sing as one family, please stand and greet those around you. goodness, Father of all wisdom, come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever, faithful to the end of days. Come then, all you nations, sing of the Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Bring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his name. Of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each of you. And with your spirit. And I too want to wish all the men of our parish a happy Father's Day. We finally have come full force into ordinary time. And so before we enter these sacred mysteries, we take a moment, reflect on the events of recent days. And for those times we've not been true to our call, we ask for God's pardon, grace, and strength in the future. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God. Let us pray. O Lord, grant that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive us of your guidance. Those you set firm on the foundation of your love, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, 
I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side, denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. letter of St. Paul to the Romans, brothers and sisters. Through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death, and thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin. After the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. 
For if by the transgression of the one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both body and soul in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs on your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever gotten involved in a project that you thought was worthwhile and helpful to others? But after you started down that road, you realized your intentions were naive. It was going to take a lot more work than you anticipated. But you forged ahead and this good work took its toll. It consumed more hours and concerns and frustrations mounted. People around you started to say, this project is taking on your life. Or maybe your efforts to do good stirred up opposition from an entrenched group with a vested interest in the status quo. And they warned, don't rock the boat. But it's too late because you are convinced your efforts are for the good of others. At moments of fatigue and frustrations, supporters throw up their hands and quit. Others begin to question your motives or the outcomes. If you can identify with any of the above, then Jeremiah is your patron saint. Jeremiah is the first among lamenters. You know, at heart, Jeremiah was a gentle spirit and a lover of people. But God called him to be a prophet. And as you know, an Old Testament prophet generally brought bad news to Israel. Read doom. And when he was first called by God, Jeremiah protested, I am too young. But God told him not to be afraid and promised to be with him. 
From today's reading, it's obvious he needs deliverance. Even his friends have turned on him. Jeremiah has done what God wanted. He has accused the people of Israel of turning from God and relying on political alliances for their safety. As God instructed, Jeremiah predicted doom, but it hasn't happened yet. And now he's a laughing stock. Does any of this sound familiar in our present age? Jeremiah has been beaten, jailed, and released. And out of jail, he can't stop being the prophet of God. And his situation continues to become more precarious. Now can you identify with Jeremiah? Have you ever realized you've bitten off more than you can chew? Have you ever been angry with God and shouted, what have you gotten me into? Or as Jeremiah shouted to God, you duped me, O Lord. If any of this sounds familiar, Jeremiah is with you. However, He has more to say. Midway through his triad, Jeremiah's lament shifts. And he begins to to give us words of praise as he says, But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. And his lament suddenly becomes a prayer of praise and thanksgiving. Jeremiah is bold in his trust of God. He anticipates God's vindication before he has seen it. The message is twofold. First, Jeremiah stands with us in our complaint. He's been there, done that. But Jeremiah also models for us Trust that we are never abandoned by God. And so the challenge is, can we, like Jeremiah, when confronted by opposition and resistance, when we are trying to do the right thing, like Jeremiah, can we say, but the Lord is with me? Furthermore, Can we take that leap of faith, Jeremiah does, and sing God's praise even while we are waiting for evidence and a reason to praise God? In the Gospel reading, Jesus is about to send his disciples out into the world on mission. And one thing is sure, Jesus is not being subtle or evasive about what they can expect. He tells them he is sending them like sheep among wolves. They will be hauled into court, flogged, and their own families will be divided over them and turn against them. He sums it up very succinctly. You will be hated by all on account of me. As Jesus' followers, if we truly live our faith, we're going to face opposition, just as he did. As disciples of Jesus, we need to remember Jeremiah when we are alone and surrounded, when our situation is desperate. We need to remember that God is with us. Of course, If as Christians we aren't visible, if we hold our face close to our chest like a poker player who doesn't want anyone to see the cards, then we might get through life without attracting much attention. However, if you and I visibly and audibly practice our faith, we will draw attention. We'll draw attention to ourselves and stir up opposition and resistance. But we are people of hope. We trust that someday we will be acknowledged before God. While our present situation may feel like punishment and abandonment, 
Jesus promises that someday our faith and hope in him will be vindicated. On that day, the mystery will be unveiled and we will hear Jesus acknowledge each of us. Yes, this one has proved to be a wise and faithful servant. That's what we hope and long for. In the meantime, while evil seems to be winning the tug of war in the world, our faith tells us that God takes note of every sparrow and every hair on each of our heads. That hair on our heads never gives me much consolation. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe, believe in, in one God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us, for us and for salvation, salvation he came down, down from heaven. And by the, the Holy, Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Conf confident that God hears and answers our prayers, we put the needs of our world and communities, we perceive them before the throne of heaven. For the church, that we may have the confidence to proclaim the good news from the housetops, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That all of us across this planet, our common home, may strive to make the earth livable, bountiful, and beautiful for generations to come. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all our fathers and father figures, living and dead, who have loved and guided us throughout our lives, that they may always enjoy God's loving care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who depend on the fruitfulness of the earth for their livelihood, that they may be blessed with good weather and a successful growing season, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us in this faith community, that God may shelter us from all our fears and comfort us in our distress, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have died and for the consolation of their loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our own intentions, we pause and pray. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. All powerful and ever-loving God, we give you thanks for the gifts, the wonders, the opportunities that you present to us each day. We ask you today especially to give ear to our prayer, to listen to our cares and concerns, and in your love and wisdom to answer them as you will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, receive the sacrifice of conciliation and praise and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You're indeed holy and indeed be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walks with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, 
We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor in the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Christ Jesus, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the On this Father's Day, I invite the women and children in the congregation to stand and raise your hands over the men of our community as we bless them. Gracious God, bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers and grandfathers, godfathers, uncles, and big brothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we may Honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and blood of your Son, we ask your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our pure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God.